load up and see what we get here. So we got Alan versus Leighton for this. So a rebel versus an imperial list in very, uh, very good style. So Leighton as well. Okay, here we go. Here we go. So, Leighton's list and Alan's list. Now, these are both very unusual. Uh, I've already gone through Leighton's, so let me go through what uh, Alan's list. As soon as I saw it out there, I thought that is unusual. Don't know. It's def. It's probably not very competitive. But I'm curious about it, and that enough is that's enough for me to say I want to see that, and I really want to see that bad. So, hmm. We have Duchess, TIE Striker, PS8. When you have the Adaptive Ailerons upgrade card equipped, you may choose to ignore its card ability. Adaptive Ailerons, TIE Striker only. Title. Immediately before you uh, reveal your dial, if you are not stressed, you must execute a white one bank, one forward, or one uh, well, one bank or one forward maneuver, um, left or right. So, and that's zero points. So she gets great options there. She can choose to ignore it and not be blocked, or she could use two to activate it in any direction and then do her ability. And it gives her such a great bit of maneuverability. It's no surprise to see lightweight frame on her. It means that if someone's rolling three attack dice in her direction, she'll get an extra dice, although it's also important to remember, people, that it can be important when you roll the dice. And I advise people to roll their original dice and then roll the additional dice, because technically, it's after you roll your defense dice, and someone can call you up on the rules for that, and uh, if they want to be a rules lawyer. But as a late talent, she's got Swarm Leader. When performing a primary weapon attack, choose up to two other friendly ships that have the defender inside their firing arc at range 1 to 3. Remove one evade token from each chosen ship to roll one additional attack die for each token removed. So that changes Duchess's attack into a 5 dice primary if both the Inquisitor and Thalen Rudor have the evade token. Which you may notice they don't have the evade actually on their upgrade bar. So how on earth can they get that? Well, they get it through TIE V1. TIE V1, after you acquire a target lock, you may perform a free evade action. So he's going to have the target lock if he wants to get that evade token to then proc uh, Dutch's ability. Which is also why you don't see Duke on these ships, because Duke helps by keeping the evade token. So it's a nice to see a push the limit build, which does help with Valen as well. Inquisitor, when attacking with your primary weapon at range 2-3, to three, treat the attack as range 1. Yeah, you are. Uh, essentially, the Inquisitor has a three attack. It's a way to give the Inquisitor three attack dice without breaking the advanced prototype in itself. Um, Valen, you don't see as much after defending him from a free action, but with push the limit, it allows him to perform that free action and then perform another action, giving him great quality or uh, great economy on his actions, especially if he waits for when he's attacked, but it does require someone to attack at him. And, of course, if he just doesn't survive, then, eh, not much he can do there. Um, assault missiles on both for splash damage, which is good. It requires the target lock, so they're not required to have the focus token or an evade token to fire them for whatever reason. So, yeah, and stealth device to help them with their evades a bit. This actually could be a very difficult list to push damage through onto. Alternatively, Mayday is potentially more damaging. Uh, we have BB-8 on Nora Wexley to give her a barrel roll upon a, boot, a green reveal maneuver. Push the limit to give her a great action economy, which works great with BB-8, because you uh, perform the free barrel roll, get your action with push the limit, and then clear the stress you've just gained, and then perform your normal action anyway. Jan Oz can give you a can give anyone who takes a focus action an evade token instead, which procs in combination with Comms Relay and Duke on the T70s. 
And finally, Alliance Overhaul. Now, this is the first time I've seen Red Squadron veterans, i.e. the generic T-70s, actually in action. So it's going to be curious to see how it all goes. With R2 Astromech, they're, they're one speed and two speed maneuvers are green, giving them great, a great dial. Um, their two turns are green, so it gives it fantastic ability to turn around, especially when combined with a talent roll. Uh, Duke to negate the attack dice, which is fantastic on a three attack dice ship. You really want to see that on defenders. So that's fascinating to see on here. And integrated astromech, so you can survive a bit longer if it requires you to pop that astromech. Right, let's shove over to the board. They're probably begun set up right now as we speak. Uh, yep, so we have Leighton on the left there. And I believe Alan has yet to arrive at the table and he'll be sitting up on the right hand side. So well, while we're waiting, I'm going to start getting the overlay ready. So excuse me if I go quiet for a little bit. <laughs> so what do you guys think of the two lists that we've got coming up here? I think they're very unusual. They're extremely unorthodox. It's not what I expected to see when I was coming to this tournament today. I thought we'd see, you know, a few kind of standard meta lists, but it's very unusual um, to see those uh, those two combinations. It's, yeah, I, I did not expect to see Valen. I did not see generic T-70s, but I'm glad I do. I think the T-70 is a very underrated ship. Um, I mean, yeah, the T-65 uh, is also not great, but... You tend to see more of the T sixty five these days because bigs. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna I'm curious to see how this is gonna go. So we have Nora starting off at particle seven, right at the top. La -la -la. And then the T seventies underneath, both Red Squadron veterans. I agree, uh, Fallon Rith the third. I think it's because uh, I've never seen them be used, and usually when you see generic not be used, the implication is there that it's just not worth the points. But a weird combination where you're using a ship to give you evade to, for not only for defense but also for the Duke. Very interesting. The problem is the Duke because you're such a low pilot skill ship, you don't want to spend it for defense. You want to keep it for offense, um, which can be troublesome. So I'm curious whether the Duke is literally there, or the Duke and the comms relay is for there to always have Duke proc, or whether it is, an, or if it's there for any defensive reason at all. I personally think it's just there to get the evade token and then to keep it. You know, you don't need to spend it for evade. You've got uh, integrated astromech to pop. They're going to die eventually anyway. It's there to get the maximum damage output against your opponents, which is going to be strong against. Mayday uh, against Alan Barton's list because they want to take target locks and not focuses. So this actually could be his downfall. Um, Alan's a new player here. I've not seen him here before personally. And he said that he this is uh, not his first time down here. It's his first tournament here though. So that's going to be nice. Uh, also, I am surprised about the assault missiles and the taps. I also would have thought proton rockets. But at the same time, it means that he's got to choose between Swarm Leader on Duchess, or the Prockets for the prototypes. Agreed, the Assault Missiles become much more deadly because they have to stick together. However, as I said before, if the comms relay is just there to give the initial evade results to them, but not to spend them, then they don't need to stick together. They can actually fly separately. And it also completely nixes the idea that Jan needs to go down first because... The intention is not to spend the evade. The intention is to keep the evade to map to push damage through on the defender. So I'm actually wondering whether this is not this is a very intelligent build of providing what looks to be an Achilles heel without it actually being an Achilles heel. Whether that's the intention or not, well, it remains to be seen. But uh, the beginning asteroid setup now it seems to be that Leighton had the initiative because he went first. Oh, no, it was it was Chris who, it was, uh, 
sorry, Alan who had the initiative. Interesting. Uh, as the points, yes, uh, Alan has the initiative at 99 points. So uh, that's going to be, that could be important, especially if there's a zero proc in there. I mean, um, all their ships have different pilot skills. The own, there's, there's no conflict at all. So only when an uh, injured pilot or a card like that comes into play, or damage cockpit, will uh, we see the initiative actually um, matter. This is going to be a very interesting match. I can't wait to see how it all plays out on the field. Um, as the asteroids are set up, they're both beginning their game now. But at the same time, Jan doesn't need to be close because the first round you do a one forward, you give us uh, one person an evade token, you go one forward next turn, give the other person an evade token, they have their evades, you're now free to maneuver how you feel. Uh, you don't have to then spend together unless you want to spend those evade tokens, in which case it all depends on what Leighton's intention with the evades is, whether to keep them and not spend them or whether they are there for some kind of defense. But I don't think that's the case. Um, yeah, so I, I think that's what we're going to see. It's also unusual to see Swarm Leader on Duchess. You know, it's most often see her with Veteran Instincts to shove her up to Pilot Skill 10, so she always moves last and has the maximum uh, unpredictability with her Adaptive Ailerons. But against this list, it's not going to be it's not going to matter. So, yeah, I think he made the right call there, at least against this one. Uh, but this is going to be a fascinating game. For those of you playing along at home, you may notice that the Tie Advanced prototype now has a much more accurate uh, silhouette uh, as a little bit of an Easter egg there for you. Basically because I've gotten more accurate information about how the ship is constructed. So, yeah. A bit of trivia there for you. Because I do design these overlays myself. In my spare time. I don't get paid for them. So we're into the, pl into the planning phase now. Leighton with an interesting setup, so it seems to be that his intention is to actually uh, get give the uh, the folks the uh, the evade tokens away, but then run away with with Nora or bring her into her as a separate entity at a later time. This is going to be that's a very unusual setup on Leighton's side, but could be intelligent. It, I don't know. It, it's all going to we'll see how it plays out. Just getting the overlay set up now for you guys. This will include all information, including the uh, the uh, the upgrades. Providing I can do it before they get to engagement range, which I assume I can. But um, you never know. You never ever know. So who's your money on, people? Do you think the Empire have got this one in the bag, or do you think the Rebels can inspire hope? and get another win. And here's where the curious maneuver starts. So a two right from the X-Wing, gaining distance, eh, it's not a bad choice. And one's gained the, the, the evade token, number one has gained the evade token, number two has gained the focus token, because Janos can only proc once per round. Forward forward from the, uh, from the Inquisitor, the Inquisitor right there. And here comes Nora turning into... That's very interesting. I have no idea what Leighton's doing here, but whatever it is, I like it. It's uh, definitely unique. I'll say that. Uh, whether it's a good idea, I don't know. He's probably trying to line himself up so he's got a clear avenue to speed forward Nora should he need to. So Valen and the Inquisitor have shot forward. Uh, 
veil in the court is on the inside, whereas the Inquisitor is on the outside there. Using a boost action to give themselves a bit more maneuver around, but however that might cause problems, he's going to have to either split them or slow them through the asteroid field. I believe I have most of the overlay nearly ready, guys. Just got to do the upgrades. At this point, I wish I had a co-commentator in here to give me a hand, but uh, they're not engaging anytime soon. They're still in the planning phases. My guess is that Alan's trying to think where Leighton's going to go with Nora, because Nora could very easily turn left um, and actually come at the formation, although <laughs> jousting with that is not going to end well for you, uh, so I wouldn't advise, advise it. But um, anything with Swarm Leader, you want to be careful of. Talon roll from number two there, and I believe from one. Very interesting. Very interesting. This is an unusual play here. It means that one of them won't get their folk, uh, their evade tokens though, and that could be a problem for the future. Okay, Nora seems to be wanting to joust with this group of ships. I don't think that's a fantastic idea at all. Um, especially when not both X, both only one X wing has its evade token. That could be if Nora's taken out now. Yeah, well, that's gonna severely impact the effectiveness of Layton's list. Here comes Duchess. A barrel roll to give himself space to go around that asteroid. Very wise maneuver. Although it does mean he's going to have to go forward and then turn. And then again, his um, adaptive aileron's maneuver should give him enough uh, forward momentum to then turn around the asteroid. And here comes the Inquisitor. And just like that, everything is ready. So let's switch us over 
to the overlay. There we go. And the Inquisitor's looking for a boost. Not going to happen, sadly. Not going to happen. Uh, can a forward boost get you? Oh, I think that's going to be tight. I think it's going to be too tight. Sorry, Alan. Uh, so you're going to have to stay where you are. He was hoping to get uh, distance for a target lock, and he's not going to get it. Um, that boost could have given him the exact butter zone of range 3. But Valen blocking his own, menu, uh, his own boost meant that he was unable to. Kind of, I don't know if that was a bad mistake, if that was a mistake on Alan's part, or a fantastic play on Leighton's part, but either way, very, very good. Uh, oh, three hits on Nora. Spend the target lock, gain a focus result, spend the focus to gain, uh, to turn that to uh, four hits. Oh, this could be Valen's down. Yeah, that, that's Valen dead. Valen has been completely taken off the board in one full volley from Nora. Ouch. Ouch. Not even time for the stealth device to get destroyed. Just gone. Off the board. Go. And suddenly this becomes an uphill battle for Alan. Oh boy. And the X-Wings are not even in the fight yet. N Nora is untouched. Versus the Inquisitor and the Striker. This is where Duchess really has to pull her weight because she's the only thing that can outmaneuver the arcs on those things reliably. Whereas the Inquisitor could do that with the boost and barrel roll combinations, he's losing action efficiency for that. That was big. That was a massive swing. And let me quickly tally the points up and see exactly what we've got there so in losing Valen uh, we've gone down to 65 on Alan's side there uh, versus Leighton's full 100 ouch what a swing in less than in the opening 15 minutes of the game we've had our first ship destroyed and again as I said I didn't even get time to take the stealth device off because it just was destroyed it went from full health and not to nothing and that's the danger when you're facing something like Norowexky that can shove out so much uh, damage uh Red dice creep is a thing, apparently. All right, and here's where the X-Wings are probably going to come in. And number two is going to gain its uh, uh, evade token, although going straight is not a good idea for it. But if you bank left, you might be able to just avoid the asteroid and come in around it next turn. But he might be in a bit of an awkward spot here, Leighton. Oh, no, oh, of course he's got R2 Astromech, so he can do a two turn and still remove that uh, stress token and get his action. And I believe that's range 1 to 2, so he can indeed get a focus token. That's uh, right, an evade token, because of Jan Ors. Uh, but I do think it's wise to check range, because if it's, if it's a slither in range 3, it's out. Uh, well, there was no checking of range, so I think they both ascertained that it must be at least range 2. Uh, no complaints from the... Yep, Valen! Woof! Nora shot at range 3 of Valen, through the asteroid... All blanks and a focus, and Valen just mm, withered and melted away before Nora's four, uh, three attack dice, and then a focus uh, target lock spent for a focus and conversion. Ah, oh, what a what a shot, what a play! But it completely has changed things because now it's three on two, and those two cannot withstand. Cons a concentrated fire from all three of those ships. Not with Nora there, not with the X-Wings either. Especially with the X-Wings duking down defense dice. They're going to have to start relying on getting those focus tokens to make sure they can avoid the duke. I wasn't expecting that. That was certainly not expected, but uh, still a great thing. <laughs> Move you guys so you can actually see me. So so I'm not just weirdly looking to the right there. Actually, no, put, put that there. I go. Hide the messy office. Okay, so checking line here. Well, if you're checking it to see whether you're in, you're not allowed to do that. Um, and generally, there's a very easy way to check without actually measuring. Get down on your hands and knees and actually look down the line. That's what I do. Uh, you can actually see me if I do... You can see me doing that in um, a game I played with Toby a few weeks back, in fact, where he was flying, funny enough, four Inquisitor... Four TIE Advanced Prototypes, I should say. And I was flying Cassian, Corrin, and Biggs. Um, you can see me get my head down on the board and look down 
the line because nothing's better than your own line of sight, in my opinion. I have a laser and I've given up using it because it's just my hands shake and I can't get the line to look straight. So just look down the line and you're usually good. But still, oh, and here's where Alan's in trouble because Leighton set up quite the kill box. If, uh, if Nora turns left, she's got her rear firing arc to bear upon uh, poor the poor Inquisitor. Or if she goes straight, she could catch the Inquisitor while also catching uh, Duchess. And that could be bad. Those X-Wings, all they got to do is do a slow roll forward and they could potentially catch either of those. But I think they want to get Duchess. Duchess is the more slippery of the two targets. And if you get a shot on Duchess, I would take that over the Inquisitor. Yes, the Inquisitor is dangerous and he has assault missiles. But uh, Duchess is the late game is, is the late game match you don't want because she can continuously slip out of the situation. You want to kill her as soon as possible. She's also part skill 8, which doesn't really matter because the Inquisitor is also 8. So um, destroying her is one less ship that's firing before you. And a target lock uh, between the, uh, uh, from the Inquisitor to Nora, but he's considering whether he wants to do that. But I think it's the only thing he can do, and he's, he's already committed to it. So he has he's, he's measured, so he must do it. And here comes Duchess. Now here's the thing, Swarm Leader probably won't come into play. Because I believe Swarm Leader has very specific guidelines for how it must be activated. Uh, choose two front of the three ships that have... Oh no, it's not the range, it's if they have. They could be anywhere, so long as they have the Defender in arc. So in this case, Nora. Unfortunately, by the looking of it, I don't think Duchess has arc on Nora. Now, if he were to barrel, he'd get arc, but then there are those X-Wings, uh, which he'd get out of the way of the X-Wings. But the question is how, you know, how badly does he want to kill Nora? No, he's going for focus. I think that's a bit of a mistake. But uh, we'll see how things progress. Because right now, Alan looks like he's splitting his fire. Duchess is going for one of the X-Wings, while uh, the Inquisitor is going for Nora. And that might actually impact him. But when you're rolling like that, that's not going to impact too much. Um, so four hits and one. So there goes a sh all shields on Nora Wexley there, uh, plus a damage card, which is a critical hit. Ouch! So this this is not a half measures game. They're going all in with the damages. We've got a critical hit on Nora already from four amazing hits there, which I believe was the assault missiles being spent on the Inquisitor. Yes, it was, uh, and unfortunately nowhere near. So the du Duchess does not get a fire. And sadly, the splash damage from the assault missiles is wasted, but I guess if you don't fire your missiles, you might never fire them. And four dice is better than three. Uh, there's two evades. Ah, that X-Wing's fine. It's fine. There comes number two to fire back at Duchess. Let's see if the Duke will come into play. He does have an evade token, so uh, Duchess will be able to spend that to duke it back up. However, that's why he's, fire he's hoping that uh, Nora can strip that down. Just one crit. Oh, and one evade. So... There's still a Duke. Uh, Duke's going to proc, but it's not going to stop much. Because Duke, one of those down, which um, he, ha he has to spend anyway. But he spends it to avoid taking any damage from Duchess, which is a wise decision. And unfortunately, number one doesn't have arc on anything. And this is... Now, now we enter into the maneuvers game. Because everything is shot. Everything is shot. We're now into the planning phase. The question is, where is everyone going to go? Duchess could be in several different places, depending on what her maneuver is going to be. Leighton knows this, and he's got to hope that he can somehow create a kill box that no matter where she is going, he's going to get her. He could also use Nora to block uh, a Duchess. Uh, for the adaptive ailerons, at least. Uh, but then she still gets a normal maneuver. But probably we better block the Inquisitor to stop his action economy. Because then she can also uh, block where he's going, providing he's turning in, uh, which probably be a one hard turn. Uh, so uh, maybe he should be, be able, maybe should be able to do it. Not sure. Um, but if she can block the Inquisitor, she can then have her rear arc against Duchess. Should Duchess go somewhere uh, foolish like the rear arc? I can see this game becoming quite a tense one in the future. If um, if Alan is able to take down an X-Wing or even Nora, this game becomes a bit, a bit more in Alan's favour. Although Alan still has that uphill struggle. 
It's going to be a tough one. And because you know the Inquisitor's on the board, I'm just going to move the ID marker right there. So, so the Inquisitor and Duchess versus Nora and two Red Squadron veterans. Uh, it's nice to see the Red Squadron uh, generics being used. Didn't think we'd see them. And as uh, one of our viewers, which is... Uh, <clears throat> uh, Falanir states that he's curious to see how the rebel veterans are worth, if the rebel veterans are worth the point cost. Uh, because usually when you see them, it's usually the blue squadron vets, not the red squadron. So, or the blue squadron novice, and not the red squadron veteran. So it's quite possible that that extra pilot skill is not worth the extra increase in points, but we shall see. Ugh. They're both looking and wondering whether... The... Yeah, it's all about Nora. And Leighton knows this. Leighton knows that he could turn left, but then Nora could slip things, and so could the Inquisitor. But if he turns right, then he's going to have range with Duchess. And that could be even more devastating. Especially since he, don't, he, he probably can't block the Inquisitor. Uh, two turn... Won't block the Inquisitor unless he can somehow get a barrel roll before or after that. But unfortunately, with the asteroids where they are, he can't use BB-8. And he has no boost action. I don't think... No, he doesn't have vector thrusters. So he cannot do a barrel roll after maneuvering either. So he's going to have to rely and hope that he can catch in. Is this a talent roll for number one? It's a three turn. And yeah, th yeah, number three's... No, no, number three's doing a th normal three. Probably hoping to block the Adaptive on's turn there. The question is, if she does do a, a K turn, which is a 2, it means she could end up behind that X-Wing, and that's going to be a very bad day for him. Now, on the other hand, this could be a very awful day for the Inquisitor, should Nora be turning right. Nope, he, he'd looked, but no, even I can tell you that you're not going to be barrel-rolling out of that one, Leighton. And a 1... SoftBank unfortunately tells a sad tale of Nora possibly not getting any shots this round. Unless Duchess would have formed something crazy and to end up in the arc, which I'd be impressed if she did, because uh, I certainly wouldn't want to put Duchess there. Nora's in a bad spot for Leighton. He's prob because if the Inquisitor's a one hard turn, it can then barrel to make sure it's out of uh, Nora's firing arc. But it does mean it does get closer to those X-Wings. And there's the one turn, like I predicted. Uh, the one turn on that thing is green, so it will clear the stress. However, it leaves it perfectly positioned for a barrel roll. Which will then catch, uh, get out of Nora's arc. And then, uh, all be good. And of course, if it barrel rolls, then gets an OV token, it can... Duchess then gets a boost to her attack. Should she get one. And there we go, a barrel roll to get out of arc. It makes complete sense to be doing that. It's exactly what I would do. And through doing that, he's uh, avoiding being shot at by Nora at all, which is exactly what you want. And Nora most likely is not going to get a shot this round, which is bad because Leighton really needed that efficiency. His problem was that he didn't look carefully and see if he could complete that barrel roll. Um, even I, I, you know, you need to, you need to remember, it's, a ba it's two base widths to get the barrel roll in there. Um, it, he should have done a two turn. A two turn would have mean that it would be out of arc initially, but it could slip it. Or even a two bank actually would have been, would have been done the same thing. But yeah, right. Adaptive ailerons. He's got to commit to the direction. He's going left. Well, he's already decided. You, you can't go forward either. So he's choosing not to do it, and he's bumping. Oh dear! Right in front of number one. <laughs> But at least he doesn't get to uh, get shot by Nora either. Although I don't know if he has Arc on Nora. I think he does, just does, but he can't do anything because the... Actually, no, the Inquisitor does indeed have a um, an evade token. So he could boost Nora's attack. Uh, sorry, Dutch's attack. And I think... Oh, they're measuring carefully here. I think that's in. I can't see because of Leighton's head. But uh, we'll soon find out. The laser line's coming out. Which I don't think is going to help the masses at all. It's extremely close. There, it's going to be a judge. They might need a judge to call this one. 
In which case, I or Chris... Chris is our marshal, but I'm also an acting judge here. You can, but Nora... The, the, the awkwardness is that at the same time, Duchess has the option not to. So he might have figured, well, if I'm going to bump it, it's going to mess up my manoeuvre, so I'd rather not do it. But at the same time, has he committed? That's the question. And I think that's an awkward question that the FAQ needs to answer. And I think they're going to call a judge because they're still deliberating over this. Yeah, they're, they're, they keep on going back and back and forth, back and forth. And now Leighton's taken... Oh, you know, it's Chris. The marshal for the, for the tournament is taking it. And he's going to take a very hard look and see whether it does intersect and make a judgment call. So our marshal is on there on the table. Um, even he's having to get out the range rulers for a more definitive line to, for a call on this one. It's a very difficult set of circumstances. Thing is, the problem with that juice is he didn't put the template down. He put it. He hovered it over, so you could argue that he didn't place it. Which I, I know, I know that's get you know spirit of the rules and all that. But still, okay. So it looks like that he was in. Didn't boost the attack. Nora gets an evade token, but still takes two damage. Two crits. Ouch. So Nora's taken a lot of critical injuries, and she gains a stress token. Mm, not too damaging for her. The important thing is the two crits, which I wish he would have held them up, but oh well. Um, oh yeah, it is entirely a bit dodgy, but maybe he's a new player. I, I, like I say, this is his first tournament here, so it most likely is actually his first time. So um, hopefully what he can watch this back and realise, okay, in the future I can I shouldn't do that. But, you know, all's fair. And also, it's a casual event, so swings and roundabouts, you know. If we were regionals, then it's a different story. But, um, yeah. Speaking of, upcoming in July is our store championships, I believe. Let me just get the dates for people right now. Because we've confirmed the dates for all the store championships. And we are hosting a store championship for all our Star Wars games. That's every single one. Star Wars The Card Game, Star Wars Armada, Star Wars Destiny, Star Wars Imperial Assault, and Star Wars X-Wing. And, of course... We will be streaming the, the, the store champ, and there's four hits uh, from Red Squadron Veteran Number One there into Duchess' side, and Duchess gets nothing and is immediately removed from the board. It's the Lone Inquisitor taking on two X-wings and an arc. I don't see that happening, <laughs> personally. I don't see that coming, uh, going very well, to be quite frank. In fact, I see the exact opposite happening here. And three hits from the Inquisitor. Actually, no, that's from the that's from the X-wing. Oh dear. Uh, oh, two of eights. So the Inquisitor takes uh, one, but he has an evade token. Layton pointing out that he does, he can avoid the uh, the, the attack. So, or, or, yeah. Oh, but he loses the stealth device. So there was one hit in there. I think Layton pointed out, like, no, you do have an evade token, so you can evade two shots, uh, which, um... I know, two ships and two shots. That is, I, I, I'm kind of flabbergasted, to be fair. So stealth device has been removed on the Inquisitor. All right, so yeah, we have several events going over, and uh, I'm gonna while they're, while they're going through the planning phase, I'm gonna name what events we have going on. We've got a lot of events, and I'm gonna go through all the big events that are coming up over the next few months here at Athena, and no matter whether they're Star Wars oriented or not. So if you're a fan of any of these games, keep your ears out. So this weekend, on the sixth of May, we're running a Final Fantasy uh, the car, uh, card game regionals, and we have some sweet sweet swag, which in fact I'm gonna go and open up. So we, I can actually show you guys what they get, what they've got.
Well, so, blue ring phase. One bank from number one X-Wing, uh, <laughs> setting up the kill box. TIE advanced prototypes like to move slowly, so it's very likely <laughs> that it's gonna get caught. Now, can that X-Wing fit? Uh, I think they're trying to de deliberate that. Yeah, I actually would have done the exact same. Uh, I would have advanced it, uh, adaptive Lawrence right, and I might have actually catered rather than slight sloop. Um, but yeah, that could have got him out of the engagement, but again, he's a new player. He probably didn't realize he can adapt ailerons into it because he's probably been told he can't bump with uh, a boost and he assumes that adapt ailerons is kind of the same, uh, which, you know, we, everyone kind of thought the same kind of thing when that came out. All right. So he's telling Nora's rear arc to, um, uh, the ship. Okay. There is an area where the Inquisitor can go and escape attacks from all of them, but it requires him going full forward and probably do a, th a three bank to the left and get him out just next to the X-Wing, uh, X-Wing num number one. Uh, oh, he's gone forward, but that's probably not going to clear X-Wing number one there. That's probably going to bump. Oh, oh, actually, no, it will. It will clear. He has slipped it, but he might just be caught by Nora. And we've also seen what Nora can do. Do you know what? I think he's just got... I think it's just out this time. So, very good manoeuvre there. He thought the x would slow roll and try and catch him. He saw it coming and now has avoided them entirely. Now, the problem here is that Leighton can't K-turn because he's going to go with the asteroid. So, he's going to have to uh, Talon, uh, probably to the left. Oh, yes, he's a slippery fellow, always. Uh, but there's no shots, I think. So, um... Yeah. Oh no, is he gonna, oh he's gonna barrel to make sure there's no shots, which is wise. It also helps him open up his choice of maneuver for next round. Template's down, he's committed. He's doubly committed, and he is now placed. He is definitely not gonna get shot this round. However, it's given Nora the possibility to just say, I'm gonna turn right and bring my rear arc to you. Hmm. Curious. This has been a very fascinating match to watch. Oh, and the Krista has taken a shield. I forgot to take that off. So, the Black to Planning phases. So, what is Final Fantasy offering this weekend? Well, we have some sleeves for the top three prizes. Different uh, variants. So, that's, that's fun. I assume these are old art cards. I'm not actually open this. So, let's have a look. I uh, know. I think it's actually the, the the certificate saying you've got around, you've got a buy or something going on. Uh, a stream showing X Wing combined with a live unboxing of prizes for an upcoming tournament. That's not X Wing. Alright, so it's something completely different entirely. Yeah, something completely different. Uh, but still, I like opening stuff. Anyway, on to the, FF, the Final Fantasy Prizes. For the third place, you get The Journey of a Hundred Distant Worlds, music from Final Fantasy. Which contains multiple tracks from many different Final Fantasy games. Second place gets a static bust of lightning from Final Fantasy XIII. And... First place, 
I was told it was going to be a, uh, a statuette of um, Squall. It's been changed. It is now a statuette of Sephiroth. So if you're a Final Fantasy fan and you like the TCG, come down to win some awesome prizes this Saturday at 10, 10 a.m. for the Final Fantasy Regionals. So yes, the Final Fantasy Regionals. On the Sunday we have Pandemic Survival, which is a team-based Pandemic Regionals. So that's £10 per, uh, per team to enter. And winners will go to UK Game... Well, we'll get first round by to the UK Games Expo uh, national events for Pandemic. Uh, the following week, on the uh, 13th, is a Ticket to Ride Regional, along with a Magic PPTQ. Uh... Week after that, on the May 20th, we have the Catan Regionals. So, Settlers of Catan, or Catan, whatever you know it by. We've got that going on. We have Guild Ball, the Summer Open, on the 27th of May. Um, and that's our next big event. Then we kick it all off into big style with on June 10th with our Netrunner, the Card Game Regional event, which is taking place over Saturday and Sunday. The Authors Tournament, an Age of Sigmar tournament, a doubles tournament, happening on the 17th of June. So that's a doubles Age of Sigmar tournament, the Authors Tournament. And there's a talent roll, not the direction I would have gone, actually, for that X-Wing. But I guess he wants to give himself options and he didn't want to completely take himself out of the fight. Although, number two doing a bank is surprising to me. Um, I think a Talon would have been better, but then maybe he couldn't have completed that. But he's getting a target lock on the Inquisitor. Wise decision. Give yourself extra quality. You're not being attacked, and it's going to remain. So, And Nora's bringing the rear arc to bear upon the Inquisitor, who might just slip it again this round. Anyway, back to the announcements. The First Door Championship is on June 24th, when it's Star Wars Destiny. Uh, the following day, on the Sunday, Sunday the 25th of June, is Star Wars the Card Game Store Championship. We have, on the 15th of July, and you'll be able to tune in live for this one, our X-Wing Store Championship. Tickets available now online for £10, and that's for all of our, event, our events as well. Uh, so you can find our tickets online for all of our big events. The week after that, on the 22nd of July, we have our Game of Thrones, the card game regionals, which we are, we are hoping to also stream, with a bit of luck. August 19th, the Armada Store Championships, which again, hoping to stream, if I can figure out how to do it. And immediately after that, on the Sunday, August 20th, is Imperial Assault. So, August 19th for Armada, August 20th for Imperial Assault. And that's all of our store championships and regional events that are happening at Athena Games. So we are, we've got to go a lot going on over the next few months, people. Well, the Inquisitor has slipped the arc once again. It's going to get a shot at Nora with uh, a hit. Uh, he's re-rolling with the target lock. Uh, that looks like more crits there. Nora gets an evade at least. So she only takes another two more crits and survives. Yeah. I agree. Oh, Nora has been killed. So, I don't know. It's, yeah... I think Leighton kind of handed him the Nora there. Uh, I'm not sure whether he could have found a way to slip uh, to catch the Inquisitor, but it definitely was an option, and here comes number two. Because I think Leighton's put himself in a situation now where he could actually lose if he's not careful. And technically now, it's Alan leading as the points tally to 64 for Leighton, Versus Allen 65. It's a close one. It is a close one. Ugh. We are right back to a guessing game here. It could be anyone's game. Oh no. Wait a minute. No, it can't be that. I've made a mistake. I've not considered Duchess was removed. So it is in fact still Leighton's game. I could have thought that was weird. So yes, 37 versus... Is the Inquisitor really worth 37 points? Wow. I thought he was, yeah, I thought he was much cheaper than that. So, if if another red squadron, if a red squadron is taken out, then it will be thirty two to seventy three. So Leighton needs to make sure that one of the reds does not die. 
which they are fully hulled, full shielded, versus a three hit point left Inquisitor. So... Hmm. Now, he does have the advantage of moving after the X-Wings. But if the X-Wings can make their arc, if they can get their distance, I think that's a mistake for Leighton. Going close just means it's easier for the Inquisitor to arc dodge you. Uh, unless, of course, the other X-Wing creates an alternative kill zone. But uh, we shall see. Hmm. The target lock. This is very intelligent. I think the target lock is because he knows he's going to get arc dodged. Um, so then when he does get the quality of a focus token, he has a maximum uh, damage output because he's getting the juke, he's getting the focus conversion, as well as the rerolls. I believe that's a talon for number one there. Yep, it's a talon. Although I think that might have, again, been a mistake there because look at how close is that asteroid. Uh, but then again, it's entire one to speed two, uh, one and speed two maneuvers are green. So it could do a two turn to the left and pull out. But the problem with that is it's then flying away. And a K turn. Ooh, that's a bold play. Oh, no, it's not a K. It's a forward four. Trying to get distance. He's running. He's running as fast as his little tie can carry him. But I'm not sure if it's going to be enough. Because number two has a shot. Is he going to go for a boost? A boost could take him beyond range. But then he's inviting trouble because he's opened the arc. He's target locking. He's taking the target lock. Now with the information, will he use a boost? Yes, he will use a boost. So he gains an evade token. Thing is, I would have done the boost and then done the target lock to see whether he's still in range. He is still in range at range 3, but at range nonetheless. So that X-Wing can indeed fire, and he's got no focus token to focus up on the Duke. So this actually could be dangerous for the Inquisitor. And Leighton gets one hit. He's going to spend the target lock to re-roll the two. And a hit. So there's two hits there. And I believe there's two evades, but Duke one down with a focus, he has an evade token, so he's fine, but it's still annoying. <laughs> this could be a very long end game. I, the Inquisitor is, is fast enough and maneuverable enough, and because he maneuvers, maneuvers after the X Wings, it could be a while till we see the end of this game. Hmm. Well, part of me is thinking that two is going to go forward and then boost. Um, when number one is going to probably one is pro. I think Leighton will push his luck and do it a too hard to the right with number one, but I don't know if it will clear the asteroid or not. Um, it will. It will definitely clear the asteroid, but it won't. It, I don't know whether he will be going over or not. Um. With the way the turn works. I think he will be fine. But, hmm. We'll see. If he does turn, then the Inquisitor's got to be careful of where he's, where, how fast he's turning. Because he could turn right into a zone where he's going to have an X-Wing firing at him no matter what. Exactly as predicted. A two hard. Leighton slowly edging it in to see whether he's okay. And I think he's, he's alright. They've checked. He's fine. He goes over, he doesn't go over, but he goes around it, no problem at all, and gets his action, which now is to be a focus, and he's now got a focus, a target lock, and an evade token to then juke down one of the Inquisitors of evade results. So, that is very interesting. Mm -hmm -hmm. So, what list well, would people want to see next? We have Chelsea Fine's uh, double... Uh, sorry, not double. Um, Ray and Jan list. Uh, we've already had Thomas High. We got Michael Mags with Kane and Jarris, Braylon Stram and Zeb. We've seen this before. Um, which it's Zeb and the Phantom, by the way, for people who are, who are aware. Chris Neal with Ray and Poe Dameron. Max Bull, who is also running a Nora Wexley list. It's Nora Wexley with Ahsoka Tano and Nin and Ninum. Very unusual build, but uh, bold nonetheless. 
more X Wings, which is nice. Uh, Jeff Bull, uh, Jeff Ball, who's running uh, Nora, Shara, and Jess Pava. Uh, David Lincoln, who's running Kanan and Lebo. Robin Farmden, who's running his Cratch, Quick Draw, Backdraft, and Omega Leader list. Rob Garnum, Mola Mythal, How Runner, Carnor Jax, Pure Sabak. That's probably a winner for me. I like the sound of that. Rob Cornell with Rear Admiral Charanau and Carnor Jax. John Easter with Countess Riyad, Colonel Vessery, and the Scimitar Squadron pilot. Rise Wallabyoff with Fen Rao, Talamane Cobra, and Guri. Kane Atkins with Fen Rao, Old Turok, and Manaru. Wojtek with Dengar and Ketsu Onyo. Chris Wilding with the Sarge Ventress, Syndicate Thug, Syndicate Thug. We've seen him before. Chris Potok with Zuckus, Jakku Gunrunner, and Asajj Ventress. Hmm. Uh, Adam Wright with his Boomzuki. Now, Drew Salak with Iron Pulse Mittals, Gluter Skin, Lone Wolf, and Guidance Ships. And four Black Sun Soldiers with Concussion Missiles, Dead Man Switch, and Guidance Ships. That's so hilarious, I might actually have that on the stream anyway. And Sean Riley's Pale Up Gadal Gadali, Guri, and Tansari Point Veteran. Yeah, I'm thinking Adam Wright's Four Black Sun Soldiers, all with Deadman Switch, Guidance Chips, and Concussion Missiles, as well as Nadru Salak in For Good Measure. I think that's a really interesting... It's it's a real funny list. I like that. All right, let's see how we, what we're going to have here. The Inquisitor's not in a good space. Uh, three hits from the... Uh, I think they spent on defense there. So, number one has had Shield removed from play. Spent the focus to avoid the hits. I would have take, take the hits and actually improve the quality of the attack. Number two doesn't have a shot, which is a shame, but oh well. Range two, here we go. It's out, Leighton. Don't, don't, don't push it, it's out. <laughs> here we go. Three dice. One, one, uh, two hits. Spend target lock. Probably gain a th Third? And no, we're not winning. It's a focus result. Jug that down. So, apparently, there's the evade token as well. So, jug that down. Spend the evade. And I think the Inquisitor has been left with only one hull left after a missed round of firing. Uh, uh, marking, I should say. So, I think the Inquisitor actually is... Yeah, the Inquisitor doesn't have any any uh, damage card assigned, so it's only uh, it's down to its hull. And the Inquisitor's in a good spot here. He's very close to those X wings, making it much easier for him to slip the arcs of both of those, providing both don't do anything unconventional. Um, now, would I risk a four K here with number one? I don't know. I'd be concerned about the cross on asteroid there. Um, in fact, a four K with both of them would be fantastic. If it wasn't for asteroids. <laughs> Um, then again, two, maybe not, but, um, it would create, he's done a great job of manipulating the arcs on the X-Wings to make sure that wherever the Inquisitor goes, there's always going to be an X-Wing firing at him. Ideally, you'd like both of them firing at him, but you'll take what you can get. And he's been plinking damage off the Inquisitor for a few rounds. All it will take is two more hits to kill that Inquisitor. But can the Inquisitor kill the Red Squadron veterans before they get a chance to do that? Don't forget that Leighton still has his Evade tokens, which he can spend for defense if he wants to, and the Integrated Astromech to discard the uh, Astromech, which is the R2 Astromech, and discard a damage card. They seem to be discussing something here. Not sure what's going on. Uh, there's 25 minutes on the clock. Plenty of time for the Inquisitor to clean up or for the Red Squadron veterans to remove the Inquisitor from the from existence. We'll see how this all goes. Were you guys expecting things to go as it were? As in, two ships removed in two shots? <laughs> I, I certainly was not expecting that. Okay, one's doing a one bank. Oh, okay. Oh, so unless the Inquisitor's doing a very long bank, he's not going to miss, he's not going to dodge any of them. Uh, unless he does a hard one, and then uh, takes... Yeah, if it's a hard one, and uh, then boosts, he could slip both of them. No, he's gone. He's gone four forward, 
which means he's slipping one, but not the other. Hmm. <laughs> Actually, I think number one might still have arc on him, but he's probably going to boost to make sure he doesn't get anything there. Uh, but he also wants to take that target lock, and that's the problem with the v one You want that evade token, you need to take that target lock. Yeah, there's a boost to make sure that number one doesn't have a shot at him. And this places him behind the asteroid for number two, so he gets some extra defense dice. Now here's the question, does he want to take a focus? Because he knows Duke's in play. Or does he want to take a target lock and get that evade token? With the number of dice being rolled, I'd say it's better to take a focus token. But then, what do I know? You could roll black blanks. He's thinking about it. He's definitely thinking about what he wants to do. He's already got the target lock. He can redeclare the same target lock and get the focus. That's where they evade. Oh, he's taking a focus. He, so he's taking a focus. So he's pushed the limit to get the focus token. Uh, it is through an asteroid. So it is... Uh, through an asteroid at range 2, so it's only three dice, uh, four dice against the Inquisitor. Spend the target lock, Layton. Might as well. You could blank out. And there's blanks, so that's two hits. Four dice. Blanks! There, what do you what I say? You can blank out. And in the, in the end, the focus does not matter. Boom. And it's a clean... Nearly a clean sweep for Leighton with 64 points remaining on his side versus Allen's zero. That was quite an intense match. Very intense. Um, see, you say that, but at the same time, uh, you um, he rolled double blank. All, all blanks. So, <laughs> yeah. Right, so... I'll clean up the overlay as well. Wow, 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 wow. Um, hmm, yeah. uh, shall we get Leighton in here for a talk? I think we'll do that. Let's get Leighton in here for a talk, shall we?
the chair in the corner, yeah? Yes. Thank you for joining me, Leighton. <laughs> it's always a pleasure to be behind the scenes. <laughs> <laughs> so that was quite the intense match. Yeah, yeah. I mean, those one. I think the one bang on his on his Valen was just ho- that that, horrible. Three, that one shot. Just... Three dice plus the focus versus five dice. It's pretty crazy. But when I saw the he wasn't obviously actioned up, and that's why I was going to barrel the other way. And then just kind of like keep my guys together. But when I saw, oh, actually, I think I might be able to get a range here. And that's when I did it. Because normally, obviously, the whole point with BB-8 is you want to do your barrel roll and then do your push limit shenanigans. So yes. then you do the green to get the clear, the clear yeah, the stress. And then you do the action. And this game, I was saying that I, I didn't think that once this game, we were in my first round, I was doing it all the time. Mm, so, mm. like, basically, my Nora wasn't stressed at all. But this time, and the time I didn't push the limit was when I was between two rocks. And after I, he, he started doing his, I was like, why don't I push the limit here? Because I can't barrel at the moment. I'm between two rocks. Exactly. So that's been um, a bit of a mistake to make it. But, but it's one of those things, um, which someone has asked, does the Nora, um, does Nora hold the list, that list together? Or is it, because we noticed that you use Janors to give the focus, so the evade tokens to the T-70s. Now, are they meant to be defensive, or is it the idea that they just keep them throughout the entire game? It's it's both, really. So it's like, if I need to, if I'm getting hit really hard, then I can just spend them, and then just, you know, help them keep them alive, as long as obviously Nora's still there for them to then re, yeah. re, uh, um, evade up. And then, so it's kind of both, it depends, it's really situational. So like, obviously in that game, I think I, think, I, think I spent them at all. No. So they were just there for Duke, and the Dukes were working, they were getting the, they were getting the hits through. Uh, in the fir- my first game, I'd used them quite a-, a lot on the defense side. Yeah. And then it was only, I think I probably, two or th- maybe two or three exchanges I used them as to- for the Duke. Okay. But it's, 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 it's basically on the situation. It depends on what the targeting is. Because a lot of the time, your opponent's going to go after Nora first anyway. Yeah. So you can just use them offensively. Yeah, that's true. I mean, part of us, part of, part of me did wonder whether the intention was round one or two, get give the uh, evade token to the X-Wings, and then just don't worry about the list flying together and just have them fly independently, but have the focus, the, the whole point of the evades was to provide consistent push through on the damage. Yeah, yeah, that's, um, yeah, that's basically it. And so then kind of like split up, but you know, and um, so, but well, I, they kind of, they, the guys came together on that round, on that game mm. in the middle. But like I say, in round one I did, they, they stuck together, she gave over the tokens, and then okay. she done, went off and did her things, and they went off and did their things. How did round one go for you? So that was, it was a close game, it was against Wojtek. Um, I, oh. I took out his Ketsu, Ketsu Ono. Yes. In, um, so she went down quite hard with lots of duking and stuff, and then it was against a expertise Dengar. Now we, we just kept laughing, it's like, why put engine upgrade on Dengar when you've got a barrel roll that moves you like two shoot bases, bases anyway? Yes. So, yeah. um, so I got half points on the Dengar. I think I got Dengar down to three hull points before my final red squadron went down, so... But I read Squadron versus an expertise Denga who's hitting like three damage like ninety percent of the time. Yeah. And when you've got one evade, um, I loved um, Voitex's face when I blew his mind when I used my Nora Rexley as defensively on his Denga to get <laughs> to get three evades. Really? <laughs> yeah. He was shooting her at range three, and then I spent the target lock. To, I, I I rolled focus focus and spent the target lock to get a focus <laughs> to then spend my focus. To well, get I guess evades. that's when you use it for that. For yeah, yeah. On the evades, he was like, and he even he even made, like, made me read my own card because kind of doubted me. He made yeah. me doubt my myself because he was like so adamant no, that that's how it works and I was like yeah it does <laughs> it works on defence as well as attack so everyone something. forgets that they tend to remember that it works things work on attack but not defence everyone forgets that Finn gives you extra dice mm. on defence as well as attack everyone forgets that um, Palpatine works I think everyone remembers that Palpatine works on defence but very rarely on attack yeah well. yeah it's weird how people tend to focus more on attack than they do defense, especially when adding a dice or a dice result is very effective. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it does it helps? Like in that situation when she was on, say, at range three, it allowed a one agility ship to have three evade results. Yeah, which is ridiculous. That is uncanny and different. Yeah. But I, I suppose that saved you. It did. It did. I mean, zero damage on that on that attack. And yeah. His big his his um his big hitter is is doing nothing. Well, allows my guys to kind of um to just poke away as they were. Mm. Close game, but you lost that? Yeah, it was, it was a loss, yeah. So I say, um, Dengar fully finished with three three whole point left. So I got my I got my half points on the Dengar. That's fair. So it's so it pretty good. Pretty, and I was very happy to win that game. But those yeah, those two those two one-shots were quite... <laughs> yes! Uh, everyone's just kind of going nuts over the fact that Valen died in one fire. And everyone's saying Empire because action efficiency and economy and such. Um, but then when you just obliterated Valen in one go... 
Uh, it then was like, well, this is really swung in the favour of Leighton. And then you took out a Duchess in one swing. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, well, the Inquisitor's got a lot to catch up with here. Yeah, he definitely had a lot of work to do. And um, I knew I'd, I had to get, just get that one blink away, get rid of a stealth device. And I knew just, it'd just be a be death of a thousand cuts. If I can just get one hit each time, one hit each time, and try and spread the arc so at least one of them's going to hit him. Yeah, that, that was what I noticed that. Um, because... Although it's good to converge fire, it's better to at least have one ship firing at someone. Yeah. So you were looking to make sure that if he did slip the arc of one, the other would be able to uh, cover that. Exactly. Um, very effectively. You flew that very well, I have to say. Um, what was the whole idea with the... Because um, you set Nora up facing 90 degrees compared to the X-Wings. Is there a reason for that? I just like to mess with my opponent's minds <laughs> in the first round. Literally, is people, that the reason? People, people hate it when I set up sideways. They're like, oh, they absolutely hate me setting up sideways. and just really affects them. And also, because you can just turn and move around and like I did, I, I did my twos and I did my, my, my turn around. Yeah, the Talon roll, which is, that was like, what is he doing? <laughs> it's just like, it's just basically to say to my opponent, I'm unpredictable as all hell. So you're going to have real trouble predicting where I'm going to go later on because I'm not going to do the predictable move. I suppose Come on, a, that's, 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 like, uh, that's like that's like when an art student is told to analyse a piece of artwork when they just like it because it's nice you know they're just they're making up excuses like yeah, yeah doing, do, doing the fluff um, it's just yeah it's just like um, it's like being a bit quirky every now and again instead of just setting up straight and just doing the doing the, the gauntlet just kind of being like right where am I going to go where am I going to go and just kind of be a bit a bit cray cray that is certainly a unique approach <laughs> Look, like, one I approve of <laughs> but a unique approach I mean you've got to be careful because you can set yourself up sideways and then they just go five and then get behind you yeah. and you're like oh okay oh boy yes, yes. So you've got to be careful um, especially when I've got like two ships of four mm. so it can be it can be um, iffy but obviously he set up on the other side of the, on the other corner and it was just mm. like um just kind of like do the dance, just, just, just like dance around, and instead of just going into the board as well, it allows me to kind of like I maybe corner myself, but then allows me to like right free up where I want to go instead, awesome. of, instead of just flying straight in. And then with the asteroids were set up as well, like they were all kind of in that cluster. His ships were more maneuverable, and my, and like although I've got the R twos and Astromex on my T seventies, like my um the arc's not exactly that maneuverable when I want yeah. to do the greens. So I kind of wanted to be able to like just not have to go into the rocks. Even though when I saw Vaden coming in, I then did go into the rocks. Yeah, but it, paid um, off. it paid off for you in the yeah. end. Uh, you took him down, and that was key. Um, wh- how are you finding the Red Squadron vets? Because a lot of people were concerned, saying it'll be interesting to see how they play because and see whether they're worth their points. Do you think they're worth their points? Or well, I'm I'm a big fan of R2 Astromech with Push the Limit Poe, just because I mean historically I've always kind of been an Imperial player and I've always played like Soon to Fell and mm-hmm. Dark Dodges and I and. So that, that's when I was when I did a move later on in the game where I did the type two and I literally missed that asteroid by yeah. like, a, 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 like we saw that there. and I was like saying to him, like this is you can tell that I've played Team to fell a lot I can see a type two and I know yeah I'll be fine there I'll be all right that with that I mean I must I, I, well, I wasn't super confident <laughs> with that one I was like this one's pretty tight but this ship has taken zero damage so you can afford to take that hit let's go let's yeah. go for it. Um, uh, so yeah, I, I so I like the, the RT on them to allow them to kind of like to basically turn their dial into a um, into an interceptor dial. But they're, they're, they're a cool ship. They've got the boost. I do definitely prefer because coming again coming from more imperial stuff. I love just action, action, action. And yes. That might be interest in doing things and being able to boost barrel, get into places and and uh, focus where I need to. So that's um, it's quite annoying at times when you're like, oh, I really want the target focus here, but I've now got to pick which one I'm going to go for. Which again, we saw you using um, forward thinking a lot in the game. You like when when you didn't think you were going to get shot or you were going to or he was going to avoid the arc. You took a target lock for the future round, and in the end, a lot of that did help you push damage through. Yeah. So um, good forward thinking. Uh, I definitely think if anyone were to watch this back, they'd see that and could absor- and I think they'd do good to absorb those kind of tactics into mm-hmm. their game. So very nice job with that. Thank um, you. Yeah, it's, it's credit where credit is due. Um, no, very well played. Very well played. Well, congratulations on your win. Thanks. It's uh, good to get a win because, like, I'm. I, 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 it's good to get a win, Mister. I, I turn up hungover with a list and win store championship. Well, I, <laughs> well, I, I was saying, like, I was saying to Wojtek, I didn't want to like downplay his victory. His victory was a solid victory. Yeah, he played really yeah. well. But this is, I mean, and again, what I was saying to Wojtek is like, I've not played since our last excavation tournament, and I make, and I came up with this idea last night when I was in bed. Just like I was in bed and I was just like thinking, I just on my phone and I was like, because well, I was just going to go pretty safe and just I, I was thinking about playing Han with um with with Poe and just going quite safe, nice and easy because not played for a while. But like I was saying, when you play this game long enough, it doesn't matter what you're flying, 
you know, if you know a Type 2 screw, if they've got a 2, for instance, you know it's going to fit. It doesn't matter what ship it was on a small base, it's going to fit into that gap. Yeah. So it's just like remembering your synergies, I find. Like when people, like, when a lot of people say, oh, I haven't flown this list very well. Yeah, but you've played X-Wing for three years. So you should know how a, how a ship moves and, yes. and, how, and where it's going to go because all ships have the same movements, just they are limited to what movement they can do. Yeah. So I wasn't downplaying the victory, but I was just saying to me, yeah, this is like I made my list last night. <laughs> so it's good to see it's got a win it's good to see that it's working it's good to see that a Duke T70 is doing work <laughs> yeah which as soon as I thought Duke T70 that's a unique one which I've not seen before because obviously you know, the Nora she should be having Carl Catan on there yeah. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's the usual um, Not, but I do think that it's a very effective thing because it increases damage output from the X-Wing which in the end is what you want because it's going to die eventually it's got two attack it's got two defense dice so it'll survive longer than most ships but it won't survive longer than say a TIE fighter mm. or an X-Wing uh, not next wing, um, a time scepter, things like that. Yeah. So you want to maximize your damage output, and that's what the Duke does for you. Yeah, yeah. It also f- forces them to think about when they spend their focus, which again, psychological warfare. Yeah. So, yeah. It got ahead on the defense side as well. Like as well with the integrated astromech, I had a, a, a that's two separate should be dead, but then I like used the focus, and then then the then, integrated astromech yeah. at the same time, yeah, to, like, just prevent two lethal wounds. Exactly. Which <laughs> that that itself is useful. I I'm think I think. Uh, I use a similar thing when I use R four D six to take stress to count down damage. Well, I count, I do it, I double it down to two, and then eject R four. Say because then it's like one, I take one and survive. Yeah. Um. But yeah. Um. Well done. Uh, do you want to plug your podcast? My plug my podcast. Well, it's, <laughs> it's not for this game. No, but I but... think people would like to hear. Yeah. Okay. So um, I'm part of uh, the Three Man Meta, so we do Star a Star Wars Destiny podcast. So you can find us on Facebook Three Man Meta or on SoundCloud. And on YouTube, um, we did. We actually episode four went live, yes, last night. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, so check it out if you want to hear about another FFG game that involves dice but and cards. Star Wars Destiny is good. Did you get into it, man? It's a good game. Yeah, so, <laughs> I know you keep saying this, but I've I've got things. I've got things called uh, money and debts. Yeah, yeah. well, yeah. debts but bills. Yeah. yeah, so life gets in the way of like, living. Exactly. So mm, that's cool. the way things work. Well, thanks for having me. Well, here. thank you for joining me in the booth. Cheers. Are we having a lunch break now? Is that uh, yes, lunch break time. Cool. Yes.